Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I want to show you how to import your own 2D sprite sheet and character assets into RPG Developer Bakken, as well as those that are included with DLC. To get started, I'm going to click on Resources in the left-hand menu, and once in the Resource menu, we'll click on Slice Animation, which is on the left-hand side. From here, we can browse the existing 2D casts and preview their contents. But to add our own, we'll actually click the Add button. You see, when you want to take your own characters, sprite sheets and add them to Bakken, you're actually adding them as slice animations. Once you click add, you'll be brought to the asset picker, and if you have any DLCs, you'll be able to see them here on the left-hand side of the screen. So first, I'm going to show you how to import 2D assets from DLC, so I'll go to the Smile Game Builder pack. The assets will show up in the center pane, and I'm going to click on Slice Animation. We can double-click to view the folders therein. This actually comes with all of the two-dimensional character assets from Smile Game Builder, and it is free for Bakken users. That means I finally get to see Marie again. Hello, Marie. Marie is best girl. That's not all. We also have access to all of the monsters that came with Smile Game Builder. So if you're really just wanting to make a game that sticks to the Smile Game Builder aesthetic, you can literally import all of the assets from that engine and continue doing so. That also means you get access to the character bust graphics. <sighs> Marie. Anyways, if you want to import one of the sprites, you, all you have to do is click on it and then click add and exit. These sprites are configured to already work with Bakin, and you won't have to mess with their settings at all. If you want to select more than one, you can hold down the control key and select whichever sprites you want. You can also hold down the shift key, select the very first sprite, and then select the very last sprite to import them all. For those of you who want to import your own sprites, we will click on select from file. This allows us to view the folders on our PC. With desktop, documents, and downloads at the very top, conveniently located. I'm going to click on downloads and show you the character that I created. Now for this next part to make much sense, you might need to have a little bit of experience with sprite sheets. Sprite sheets are sheets that contain all of the frames and animations that you'll be using for a particular character. In this case, I've got walking frames set up for this character that I've made. While you can edit existing sprite sheets, and I actually recommend that, it's a great way to learn how the sprite sheet system works, not only for RPG developer Bakken, but many, many other RPG engines as well. You can also use a third-party sprite sheet generator. Speaking of third-party sprite sheet generators, my favorite one is Pixel Character Maker. It's only four great British pounds 95. You can buy it on itch.io. The small investment is well worth it. The program uses layers to allow you to select from a wide variety of different body parts and clothing pieces to make your sprite. I created a new character, selected the resolution, in this case, 32 by 48 pixels, and just began building my character. It's very intuitive and fast to use. And if you want more information, you can visit the link in the description below, or you can check out my in-depth tutorial and review video about this tool. When I export characters from this tool, I can actually export them, the sprites facing the correct order for Bakken use. By default, if you do currently use Pixel Character Maker, that's going to be SWEN, or Southwest East North. And by the way, after export, you can easily edit these sprites in your paint program of choice. All right, so we've clicked on the sprite sheet that we want to import into Bakken. Now let's just click Add and Exit, and don't worry about this scale option here or this auto optimization option. These don't apply to sprite sheets, they only apply to 3D models, so you can ignore them. This file import window is the moment that we've been waiting for. We have a chance now to name the sprite something different, configure the X and Y slices, and the X and Y slice sizes, as well as specify the direction order. You can move this pane over for easier viewing, although I wish I could zoom in on the sprite tool on the right hand side. Now, there's a few things I want you to notice. The first being, this right hand side has a nice checkered background, which may look a little bit different on your computer. I'm using a 4K resolution and everything is tiny for me. There are gray separator bars apart from this checkerboard pattern that are kind of cutting into your sprite sheet. We need to change the X slice sized and the Y slice size to accurately represent the dimensions of this sprite. And when I say that, I mean a single frame of the sprite. I know that this sprite is going to be a 32 by 48 sprite. And when I change the X slice size to 32, those gray dividers fall directly around each individual frame, which is exactly what we want to see. I mentioned something about the sprite orientation earlier, and that was about the direction order. You can import sprites that are down left up right or down left right up. This is referring to the order of the rows in which your sprite 
sprite animation frames reside. See, not all sprite sheets are created equal. In some cases, a sprite sheet may be oriented specifically to work with a particular RPG engine. We know that this sprite is down, left, right, up because the top row of frames is facing down, the next row is facing left, the next row is facing right, and the last row is facing up. So we'll select that. This way the engine knows which set of frames to use depending on where the sprite is facing in the game. Now if you change the X and Y slices, you'll notice that blue separator bars appear. These blue separator bars are for much larger sprite sheets that contain multiple animations for the same character. Since these animations are all pertaining to a character's walk cycle, I will leave these numbers at 1. But if you had a sprite sheet that had, say, battle animations, an idle animation, a sleeping animation, and they were all together on the same sprite sheet, you would then utilize the X and Y slices. You'll notice also each time you change one of these numbers, more motion names are added to the motion list. Your motions are named sequentially by default. If you really want to change the name of each motion, you can click on it twice slowly, don't double click, and then you can name it whatever you want. I'll just name this one walk, but you can also leave it default. You can choose the scale here, you can leave it at 100%, or you can bump it up if the sprite is supposed to be a larger character than other characters in your game. This will not affect how it is sliced. You can also change the billboard settings of your sprite, but a picture's worth a thousand words, so I'll show you what that means instead of explaining it here. The display time will be a measure of milliseconds per frame, that will dictate how fast your sprite animation plays, and then the playback loop type can be set to none, back and forth, or loop. Some of these work better with certain sprites than others, you'll see what I mean soon. Finally, we can toggle whether or not the sprite is sRGB. You'll turn this on when importing images to be placed on maps, such as sprites. You'll turn it off for images that will not be placed on maps, such as images used in menu screens. And we'll just hit OK. And at long last, there is our custom sprite, beautifully represented in a 3D space. So just to go over all of that one more more time. From the map editor, we're going to click on resources, navigate to slice animation and click add. Click select from file if we want to add our own custom sprite. Navigate to that folder, click on the sprite and click add and exit. From here, we'll just enter our X and Y dimensions of the sprite itself. Select the correct direction order and go ahead and hit OK. That actually gave me a second character named Alpha in the engine, but that's OK. So finally, I can show you what exactly some of these settings mean. First is the scale, which might be pretty obvious. It's set to 100%, which is the default for all of your sprites but if this sprite is supposed to be particularly big, say 500%, then he'll be massive when you place him on the map. This can be useful for things like large enemies or bosses. You can also set the size to be extremely tiny. Here he is now at 10%. Now to explain billboard type. The sprite itself has directions that will allow it to face left, right, front, and back, but the sprite is always facing the camera, no matter where the camera is on the rotational axes. If we change billboard to vertical billboard, then the sprite will always be facing the camera on the lateral rotation axis, and if we pan the camera over the character, we can see that he has a flat sprite. That is vertical billboard. The final type is no billboard. Now we can see that the sprite is flat from all angles, except for the one directly facing the image itself. Note that the sprite will still be able to move left, right, up and down, as it still has its own orientation. You can change the name of the motion here, as well as the display time for each frame, and you can change the playback method. You can set this to none if the object is not supposed to move, loop if you only have two frames per walk cycle, or back and forth. That's what I've got this set to. I think it looks the most correct. Now I'll just hit OK. If I want to use the sprite in my game, I can go to Game Definition, Start Settings, click on Hero, Stay in Database Resource, click on Slice Animation, and there's Alpha. I'll just add and exit. We get a message saying that he's been added, unless you've checked the box to not show this message again. Apply, OK, and I can test play. OK, the no billboard sprite setting is actually hilarious, because when he turns to the side, you can't see him. That will definitely be useful for some types of games. I decided to change that to Vertical Billboard, and now I can see this setting being perfect for somebody who wants to make a game like those found in the Paper Mario series. See, we'll pan the camera upward and flat sprite. Anyway, that's all the time I have to show you importing 2D sprite assets. I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you did and what you think I should work on next. Make sure to join the official RPG Developer Bucking Discord, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.